Now, you were not on a 360 deal. No. Everyone since has been. So you managed to actually keep a hold of... But that's why they dropped us. <laughs> we, we, were, we were a really good, well-known band. We sold platinum on the, the second record. We sold platinum downloads and just lots of, lots of sales and lots of number ones and all that cool stuff. This is Tripolar. Tripolar. The third record was, well, I mean, it was four years later by the time it finally came out from the time. Like, Tripolar went for a long time. So the third record took a little bit of time to get done because we were on tour for so long and then we needed a break and then you have to make the record and it takes time. But by the time it came out, even less people were buying records. And so there's even less money coming. Our debt is much higher because we just made a record and we've just done a $100,000 video clip and our debt has gone up and now record sales are down and we're in the rock market where kids never buy records. Like in rock and roll kids are smart like kids nowadays in general they're smart they know how to work the computers if you're in country music or adult contemporary you're selling to people who are between 25 and 45 years old but most of a lot of them are not as inclined to go and figure out how to download and torrent and pirate the shit they look at it they've seen the ads they go itunes click i got it mm. they don't they don't mind paying for it because they were raised in a, in a world where you had to pay for music kids weren't raised that way they don't understand the idea of paying for it and you can't really blame them because they've grown up this way you can't point the finger at them and say fuck you you know so how do we solve that issue that brings us around to this whole the whole point of the conversation yeah yeah which is you know the record labels aren't making any money because no one's buying music anymore well the, the bands labels are, are making money they're, they are now because they're doing 360 deals the artists are making but not on the money. music they're making on the t-shirts yeah. and stuff you know but if the band sign a 360, which means they don't even get the T-shirts and the touring and all the other possible income, the record label gets all... How does a musician make money? You don't. You really don't. I mean, the only... Ownership is the only thing that creates revenue to the individual. If you own your product, you get the money. Well, the solution is don't sign to a record label, is that's a, Yeah, well, that's one solution, and that's definitely, that's definitely the long-term solution. Soon enough, they won't, even the record labels know that they're on the way out. And... Uh, I mean, the solution is really like, the, the on God's honest solution is understanding every part of what you're supposed to do. Before, it paid to keep the artist ignorant and, and keep them happy, keep them high, keep them drunk, keep them on the road, keep them lots of chicks around, you know, keep them going, keep them going out there, making money, selling records and stuff. It used to be that a, a record deal was a bank and you look at it as a long-term loan with a terrible interest rate that basically is an advertising spot for your merch and your shows. So it used to be, don't even worry if the record sales are going down, just like the, the mentality was, take all the money the record label gives you because no one's buying records anyway, the chances that you're gonna pay it back are pretty slim, but you get a free ride out into the public, into the traffic areas, onto MTV, onto the radio. Then you go and you sell the tickets to your shows and your merchandise and you can get money, you can create revenue and you can actually have ownership of your t-shirts and of your live shows. Now that's gone. Hmm. That's where the real problem began for the artists because they're like, okay, well, if, if I'm an artist, like this is my exact situation, I now, don't have a record label, which is really a blessing because I, I, I couldn't, I, even with the reputation that I have, which isn't like world class, but I have a reputation and I've done some things. I couldn't go into a record label and say, I want this deal right now. They'd say, well, we don't need to give you that deal. We've got some other guy over here who's got just as much going for him who's willing to get ass raped. So we'll work with him. Like it's hard to get the deal. So the other options are, you go independent. There's only really two options. You go and you get ass raped by the labels and you hope that you maybe become Lady Gaga, which is a pretty slim chance. Or you do a um, Annie DeFranco. But even Lady Gaga doesn't do it alone. No, there's yes. always between, behind everyone. Like, you know, the idea that Taylor Swift, you know, she writes her songs, fair enough. And, but but there's, she has the world's biggest team behind her. You can't do any of that stuff on your own. And that's the thing. The record labels understand and are banking on the fact that if you want to be on MTV, if you want to be on the major pop radio, all of those, there's no independent artists on pop radio. They're all major label artists. That's because the record label owns the pipeline to all of those outlet streams. It doesn't mean it's the only way to go, but it means that if you want to be Taylor Swift or Lady Gaga or Pink or whatever, uh, or Maroon 5 even, like Maroon 5 had to, you know, like they, they were the, when they first started out, they were just a cool new rock band and they blew up. But when it comes time to like, well, do you want to do it again? Do you want to do it again? Do you want to have another hit record, another hit record? You have to go through the system because they make, they own the hit situation, right? If you want to make a living, you can give them all the middle finger. 
if you're willing to work 10 times harder and be 10 times smarter. But you're in control. But you're in control. And I personally would rather be in control to a larger extent or at least have a really deep understanding of who is controlling the different aspects of what I'm doing. So all of those, and then as you, so as you go, you look, all right, what am I selling? You're in a business, what are you selling? No, you ask any kid who wants to be in a band, they're like, I'm selling uh, music. No, no, why, why would you sell music? No one buys music. What else you got? Oh, I'm selling dreams. Fuck off. <laughs> you know, like, no, you're selling the emotional reaction of the person who is listening to what you're seeing, what you do. I watch Lady Gaga, I'm entertained. I listen to Led Zeppelin, I feel moved. You listen to Bowie, you feel transported somewhere. You listen to Nine Inch Nails, you feel juiced up. You're selling the emotion. If you don't achieve that, if you don't impinge that emotion on the audience member, they don't want to buy your shit. They don't want to retune into the next Vivo video. They don't want to request your song on the radio. That's what you're selling. So at every turn, you have to ask, does this get the audience off? Does this get the juice flowing? Is this achieving that goal? In every, the, the, the type of logo that you use, the type of jacket you wear. Well, this comes down to that branding issue where yeah. we're not selling music because we can't, no one buys music anymore. Mm. But you've got to make them want the music and buy the t-shirts or buy the other stuff that you do mm. around that. Well, that's if you're an independent artist, right? If you're assigned to a major label, you can't even make money off that. So if you're talking about a major label, it's a, it's a different set of things where the best thing you can do, if you, this is the only option you have. If you want to sign to a major label and you've decided, I'm willing to take that ride and go and be a rock star on a major label, best thing you can do is work your ass off to get your brand as valuable as possible and get a real good lawyer when you're negotiating your contract so that you get the best deal that you can and know that you're going into that type of situation. The other option, which is the way most people are going about it now, new artists and stuff, because for every artist assigned to a label, there's a hundred who aren't, who are just as good, who are willing to work just as hard and they're learning their stuff. You have to learn how to run your socials, how to cross promote with other socials. How do you brand yourself along with those things? What the fuck is your brand? What, like, what is your brand is paramount to what you're selling because what your brand is can be cross promoted with other types of bands, brands, energy drinks, whatever it is, so that people go, oh, I get the same reaction off that band as I do off the energy drink because it's a fucking rock star band type thing. So you go, so you got to think about all those things. Then you got to figure out, okay, well, how am I going to make my music since I'm broke and no record label is giving me the money? You buy a laptop and you figure out how to run Pro Tools and you can do it. Like and you crowdsource like a lot of people have. And you have. crowdsource like a lot of people have if you want to. You can, you know, you can do it for much less nowadays. The free and if you, if you free. don't want to be the biggest star in the world, you can make a good living and with a smaller them. audience. You can make and you're actually making more money generally. Yeah, you are. You, if you're smart about it, like Annie DeFranco was doing it 20 years ago. She still does it. No one, people who know of her know her, but she's not like mainstream pop at all. But that chick owns houses, mansions, her portfolio is huge. She's, she's like, she can go and do a tour and she keeps everything. She can work when she wants to work. She lives the artist's dream. She makes music that she wants to make when she wants to make it. She decides when she wants to tour. She does it on her, it's her, her call, terms. it's her terms. That's what every artist ultimately wants. Most of us aren't willing to put the work in to get there. I mean, Annie DeFranco drove around for the better part of a decade selling CDs out of the back of her car. Just because she was like, but she literally was fucked labels. She was all reggae, all hippie, all the way like, no, I don't need anyone. I want to do my music and be an artist. She actually lived and believed it. And there are artists who are still doing that. The problem is that most artists now don't really want to do that, but they're faced with the decision, well, I kind of have to. And they have to learn. You have to actually, you have to work. You have to really work. 